Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be showing you how to create this very, very simple effect, this hit effect. So if you want to smack anybody up in an edit, not in real life, because that's not very nice, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. So let's go into it. Here's I'm going to roll something. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't really do intros, do I? So that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do this small effect. So just a pre-warning to you, I am going to create a giant pack full of a load of presets of this hit effect and many more uh, on the website, uh, which is going to be on sale very soon for a dirt cheap price. When I mean dirt cheap, I mean dirt cheap. Nevertheless, this is a way where you can make your own effect and, you know, if you don't want to buy the pack, you can just do it yourself. But, my, you know, my pack's just going to have a load of presets in it, so... Or you could create your own. I'm not very good at selling myself here am I and by using this effect what you can do is you can enhance the feeling of movement the feeling of fighting or god I sound like an old bloke you can enhance any feeling of motion to your video whether that's from hits or whether that's just adding motion while the camera's kind of moving and, and somebody said something and it makes the screen I don't know whatever this isn't like the elaborate versions that are out there this is like I said just something very small to kind of just add a little bit of a a uh, little bit of salt into that edit. Or oh, a little bit of, um, I'm trying to think of some spices. Here is the shot without the effect in it. And then here is it with the added hit um, into it. It's a layer of an effect which is complemented by sound and music. And then when we play that with the track itself and everything, you can really get the, the motion that I'm going for and the effect they'll go for. So this effect is so simple to create. Once again, probably making my pack seem a bit bleh. It's It's gonna be a time saver. It's gonna be three bucks, so uh, don't have a go at me. So drag and drop your adjustment layer onto the timeline over, uh, over the top of your clip. Um, whether you want to cut it down prior or after, just find the point. Um, and cut down a little bit out of that adjustment layer. Leave yourself enough for enough room. I know some people just kind of make them tiny and then you've got a whole situation ahead of you. So you've got your adjustment layer on the timeline. We just need to go to our effects panel, type in transform, drag and drop our transform effect on the adjustment layer and then go to our effects controls and here we go. This is exactly how we make this effect. So if you've seen my other tutorials before this about motion within uh, Premiere Pro, you can see that we use shutter angle which creates um, a motion blur uh, effect. And yeah, I've used it in basically every single tutorial. So what we wanna do is unclick, use composition shutter angle, get that gone. Take our shutter and angle to anything above 180. I usually like to just go a bit over and hit 200 because I'm crazy. So find the, uh, the point that she hits and that's going to be there. Then what we're going to want to do is just select the toggle animation for position and scale. So what we want to do is select those both of those keyframes by dragging and clicking and then just dragging them over to the left. So we've just left them to the side, but we're still on the point of contact. So now what we're going to do is adjust our scale and position. So what I want to do is I want to just increase the scale just a tad bit and shove it over to the left of it and to the top. With this effect, you kind of need to follow the, the, the way that motion's flowing through the screen. So whether that's right to left, left to right, blah, blah, blah. And here we go from right to left. Got it. Here we go from right to left and we just want to do a little bit of a budge and follow through that motion. We could probably, it's all up to interpretation and how your, you know, style is going to be. I've seen a lot of other people use, um, you know, transforming the layer. I find this is the quickest and easiest way of doing it. Just scaling up to add a bit of motion. Your motion blur is going to compensate for all, all of the, uh, the zooming in. So we just want to move in and then we want to move back to the original position. So the easiest way of doing that is to copy and paste your start keyframes. So drag a box over those two, control C, control V, and there we go. We'll go back to the front layer. So, so already, 
It's just something so small. So you can use your creativity to take this to the next level. It could be a complete new style that you wanna go for. You could say you wanna zoom into it really uh, far forward and you could use this as a tran in, as, in a transition. So adding a little bit of a bump will just help that music uh, push it through. For example, if I go back to the video that I'm currently working on for this, um, you kind of get that feeling of movement and smashing and grounding. It doesn't always have to be an impact. It can be like this video here when it helps the person move through the scene. Um, and it can really add an extra level of dynamics to your uh, to your video. Um, yeah, so it's, that, it's a very simple effect. If you are interested in making this effect, please do let me know how it goes down below. And if you have any troubles, and if this was a crap video, make sure to let me know down below. That's not what they usually say. And I want to thank all the new people that are here on the channel uh, supporting and showing you love. Um, so make sure to stick around. I have more videos coming. I'm currently working on some films. So we have some cool stuff for you to see. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will um, see you in the next one. Didn't really, didn't really go pitch black, did it? Let's be honest.